Hello, hello, and uh, I'm so excited today because we start our um, show today. It is second episode in my podcast, which I just started a few days ago, but I'm so excited because today is the, the legendary David Roberts with us, who has 45 years of experience in business transformation and today he will share his success story with us. And uh, I am so excited to hear about uh, this success and his message to millions. Hi, David. Hi, Elena. How are you today? I am so happy and grateful. Thank you for being here with us today. Yeah, it's so awesome to be in different parts of the world, different time zones, and still be able to have this face-to-face uh, -face conversation. I so love this platform and the opportunity to share with you. So thank you for asking me and thanks for the opportunity to share uh, my story. We all have a story, as I say, and uh, it would be a, a shame if your story kind of dies with you. So getting it out there every time you have an opportunity. So I'm always I'm always open to to sharing and serving uh, your audience and any other audience on my own journey uh, of success. Uh, you put that label on it. I think we all um, enjoy success in some form, but it doesn't always mean the same thing to the same to everybody. So because that's really something you define. So so. What part of my story would you like me, where would you like me to start? Uh, obviously, I have a lot more story, at least in time frame, than you do. I mean, I can start a, as early as you want, but uh, we'll hit the high points. Trust me, I won't go into a great amount of detail. But <laughs> Yeah, I think that um, as, uh, as this show is mindset to results, I would like you to share with us the story where... But really, your mindset helped you to uh, become successful, maybe to achieve your goal or overcome challenge and make that big shift in your life. Well, the interesting thing is about when you talk about mindset, a lot of a lot of times people look at kind of some kind of major shift, if you will, and there are those kind of inflection points along the way in my story but it starts very i, I came from a very modest background um, lower what we would call lower middle class here in the united states um, didn't have a lot but didn't know that i didn't have a lot so mindset first of all uh, you start a lot of times you get your mindset out of out of out of whack because you're looking at other people you're looking at uh, situations and maybe seeing, well, I'm I'm not as smart as she is or he is. I'm not as uh, successful, and so that can be an impediment. And so in my in my journey, I just didn't know. I grew up. I was I was the oldest of three children. My my parents were very supportive of what I was doing. Uh, I got to entertain folks. I I love to be the center of attention and what I, the means I had to, to take it and be successful were no more than really anybody else. A lot of people have challenges. We all have challenges. One of the things I learned along the way was pretty much whatever I set my mind to, um, my mindset, whatever I set my mind to somehow became some form of reality. A lot of times more more successful, more exciting than I realized, but it was, it was in the moment, right? It's understanding kind of, I wanted to have this success. I wanted to be, my dad was, had worked his way up from, you know, working in the stock room at a company called Sears. And he worked his way up to a regional director type level. Um, and I wanted to be, I wanted to start while he, you know, start where he left off and go from there. That's how I ended up uh, wanting to go to business school, went to uh, uh, my undergraduate business and engineering. Engineering was only because I was qualified for engineering in the school that I was in. In order to get it, um, I had to be able to fund my own 
education and those kinds of things. I think you can relate to that. And so the mindset of this is where I'm going and I'm just going to let things unfold and have a plan. Sometimes exactly what I was planning to do didn't happen that way. I never intended I my first major career move other than the, the things that I did from the time I was 10 till the time I was 17 and went off to, to college, all those things. Um, the first move was with General Motors and I worked with them. I got uh, an educational opportunity. And so uh, the mindset of just, I didn't have the best grades. I wasn't the number one in my class, but I did what I could do. And what got me that was the, the fact that in spite of all that, they looked and said, this, this guy can overcome and they they bought into me, but I had already bought into me. My mindset was, I just needed a chance. I just needed the opportunity, right? So that was kind of the beginning of that process. I never looked at what I had or kind of the limitations, if you will, and said, okay, I can't do that. It was more the mindset of how can I do that given what was in front of me so that's kind of the way things began is that is that kind of what you're uh you're looking for i mean that that whole story plays out over and over and over again and led me on a journey to to moving from building cars to being involved in technology to putting together large multi-billion dollar deals and having somebody pay. My superpower is connecting the dots. I learned that very early in my life. I could see things and connect dots that other people didn't see. So no, being aware, be, having a mindset, that's important of what yeah. you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, really. And it resonates with me so much because I think here the key point is that... Um, also what my mentor was teaching, that uh, we should have open mind and see the opportunities and have the attitude to learn and grow. Mm -hmm. And we have to have this ability in our mind to see the picture bigger than our current reality. And when we have that picture and we believe in ourselves, and we have faith in God also that he will support if we do what it takes from us, this is how we get inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, as I say, uh, one of the th I, I'm I'm known as a vision warrior, so I really uh, advocate people understanding why you're here. What is your unique reason? And by the way, you mentioned God, so I'll say God has a reason for the for all of us to be here, and it's not the same. So we're not all the same. We just, but we each have a unique reason for being here. And as I found through my journey is we all have unique value to add and we need to kind of see what people how we are serving the community the the people god brings into our path and then if anything were possible and that's the key possible all things are possible that is also uh one of the things so what would you what kind of impact do you want to have it might be financial i think really financial is just Honestly, it's a tool. You know, you say mindset to results. Well, results, if you're having impact, if your your value is getting out there, then you're not going to have a challenge with finances. People are going to, that money is going to be flowing in your direction, in my opinion. So, and that's been my experience. I didn't set out to do any of the things that I did along the way. I just had a vision of being able to lead large groups of people, have large amounts of responsibility, uh, have an impact, make a difference, if you will. And what was uh, your career in this company? You started as um, just from very uh, 
like in initial position, right? Like from yeah. where you started uh, working in this company and where did you grow? Yeah, I started in a cooperative program with General Motors uh, uh, and they had a school that at that time was called General Motors Institute. It was an engineering and management school's number one at the time, engineering school. I really didn't have an aspiration to be an engineer, but during my high school and whatever, I'd taken all the math and science and all that stuff. And and their business was kind of a secondary thing, but that's what I really wanted. But because of the only opportunity available to me because I was qualified was to go into the engineering school. I ultimately changed about two years in and ended up with a dual degree in engineering and a management degree. And then that school, General Motors, it was all intended, they were educating you to basically run the company, run, you know, so you were going on this journey. It's a cooperative program. So I went to school and worked and then I worked and went to school and worked and went to school. And that was a semester. And then it was a five-year program, but then they ultimately uh, sent me to Wharton Business School. I got an executive MBA and all this stuff. Uh, but all the while, I didn't have the money. I, I couldn't afford it. I was, they, they funded me uh, because I believed in what I wanted and what I could do along the way. So uh, then it became just one position to another. And then when General Motors acquired a company called EDS, I happened to be in a position where I was helping them roll out PCs, computers, you know, back in the day, way back in the, in the old days, right? And I was doing a project and happened to be in scope. And they, I had the opportunity to decide whether I wanted to go with technology with this new acquisition or stay in the car building business. And I just saw the possibilities, again, another word, emphasis on possibilities of mm -hmm. moving into technology and where that was going. Kind of like we're going with Be Connected now. There's opportunities ahead. Are they here? Is everything here? No, but there, you can see how things are moving. And I saw that, and I said, "Okay, I think I'll go that route. Take the risk. Do the, you know, I can, I can do this." And then became, you know, a vice pre was a vice president in that company, a subsidiary of General Motors, and then ultimately um, had the opportunity to take what I had learned there doing these large multi-billion dollar transactions where they were paying me seven digits, let's put it that way, to do. And I got recruited by a company that was at that time, Anderson Consulting, that became Accenture uh, when they went public. And I was recruited in at a partner level to help them build their outsourcing practice and got to then leverage it. So the key is being your mindset, keeping you on the path, but being able to make those pivots, make those changes, realize that just because something isn't necessarily on the path that you thought that those opportunities, being ready for those opportunities. And I, that's the main thing is continuing to keep your eyes open. As I always say, you know, we make our plans and then God laughs. So the, the key is be, being ready, knowing where you want to go. And then when the fast lane opens up or a different lane opens up or something that gives you an opportunity, be ready be ready because it's only in today what you what i did in the past really doesn't matter that much today and what we're doing going forward except that i've learned some things but i've got a lot more that I, impact i want to have i you know and those kinds of things so yeah great so it is important yet yeah, to be in this moment and do action now mm -hmm. and here is the question um, how decision making helped you how making decision fast helped you to achieve success well decision making again true the best leaders as i always say make quickly make decisions and then they stick with those decisions 
And the reason they can do that is because they have that foundation. They understand why you're doing what you're doing. You understand the unique value you can bring, not just to a specific, but to any opportunity, right? You, you have unique value. You, Alina Apokova, have unique value in every situation. And you, and you need to continue to have a mindset that knows that when somebody brings you an opportunity, this is what you can bring to the table, whether they see it or not. You with me? So that's important. And then the next thing is, is it on your path? Is it the exact path? No, that's the plan that God laughs at. Is it moving you in that direction? As I always say, warriors move forward in my podcast. That's what warriors do. And we all have challenge and support, right? There are always things that get in our way. I mean, you can relate to that, right? Going from mm -hmm. where you were and where your family was to now and being in Brighton, right? You, you, you understand that things can kind of mess things up. I, I know a little bit of your story. And, and when we talked on my podcast, I mean, there obviously there are things I didn't deal with, but you kept that vision and you kept that. So making those quick decisions, not being afraid when you, when you dial it back and I don't mean to be frivolous or, or just all over the map, right? You can bounce those things off. And by making those decisions, you are able to move forward. It's all that's one of the things I love about uh, where we're at with Be Connected right now is because it's an early adopter opportunity. There's always in every market when you think to learn business school is there is there is that first mover opportunity, and people say, "Man, I wish I would have been there back when I was doing computers." Back when I studied, I started and I ended up changing companies within General Motors, but still changing divisions. I had an opportunity to invest $10,000 in Microsoft pre-IPO and I didn't do it. Mm. So I, you know, doesn't mean that moving forward and seizing opportunities. So you can think about that pre-IPO and what, what that would have been worth. And we may, I might be talking to you at that point, this point, I might be doing something completely different, but it was an opportunity. It wasn't there. I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been, a millionaire it would have been a billionaire i mean there could have been a lot of you know upside i have friends that were that went the other way and they did very well as well um so anyway so that's that's the most important thing making those decisions but you can only make those decisions quickly if you're grounded in your mindset you know why you're here you know the value you can provide and you know where you're going in general i mean as a vision yes and not letting things about, well, I was intending to do this, but that didn't, that isn't working out, but you're missing the other opportunities that are laid before you. Yeah, great. I like how you told that uh, successful people make decisions fast and they don't change them. They just right. commit it and they do whatever it takes. And this is resonates with uh, what Napoleon Hill told exactly that mm -hmm. failures, they take long time to decide and they change their decision fast. But successful people, they make decisions fast. They see opportunities and they can see that big picture. Exactly. And it is not always that they know how they will get there, but they, it is important to make that first step. Many people just starting asking question how i do that how i do that and because they don't see the clear picture how they will do that and they don't know the answer they just stop and they never do anything this is how they just stay the same place but i also like how richard brenzel told that if you see the opportunity just say yes and figure it out on the way so tell me please how in your experience maybe you share with us this situation when you you had that opportunity and it had it was a big decision for you but you just stepped in and you did that so the probably the the biggest well there's two inflection points i've mentioned one was when 
I moved from building cars to moving to technology and the opportunity, I was already very successful on a path. The company had invested in me. And so making a shift like that and basically saying, I'm going to move with this, this company, it ultimately came, became a separate company. But at that point, it was, I'm saying no to, to General Motors, if you will, and I'm saying yes to EDS. And that was a big decision. But it was a decision where I didn't have to move. My family was there. Things were, you know, kind of settled. And that wasn't as big as when after 29, I'm, here's, you're going to, you're going to see how old I am after 29 and a half years working under the General Motors umbrella, I got approached by Accenture to consider doing what I was doing and doing that on for a million dollars a year plus, you know, and even though the money was great, changing companies after, you know, cause 30 years in a company seems is, is kind of one of those standard things, right? You'd say, okay, I've made it to 30 years. I can retire. Well, again, I have a whole, we can't, don't even have the time for me to talk to you about what retirement really is, but retirement was, and making the decision to leave that company that I had been part of from the beginning mm, and yeah. then launching into this other company and helping them do something completely different with five kids and a lot of, and all my kids were, you know, middle school, high school or younger and saying, okay, I'm going to make this big leap. So the other thing, the other one was when I decided 18 years ago to retire from corporate America to do what I call, and retirement again is different, move from just focused on making money and then having an impact to focus on having an impact and let money follow. That's a big thing. You know, you can relate to it, right? When you, you know, when you're, you need more money, you need to, to, and it's hard to see, you don't, you, you use the term, and this is a key inhibitor to the mindset is how. I didn't know how it was going to work out. In fact, I can tell you that the how after I retired, I lost $8 million. So if you can imagine my plan for quote, retiring and impact got a little bit disrupted, if you can appreciate. So, but the key is I stayed on the path and I'm continuing to move in that direction. So the stories that go along with that are ones that people look at and go, I don't know how you did that. Well, I don't know how I did it either. I just decided to do it because I knew in my heart, I knew in my gut that it was what I was supposed to do. It was why I'm here, the value I'm supposed to provide. And now I'm doing it on much larger scale. Mm, great. So uh, there are people who maybe at forties or even at fifties, and um, young all their people, life... young, very young people, very young people. <laughs> yes, and uh, they they have this feeling that um, it is not what they love to do. That they go to work, they maybe they have business, but they have this feeling that it is not exactly what they love to do. Or maybe somebody even hide their job. And what you what you would suggest uh, uh, for them? Because they say, oh, it is already late to change career. I already studied. Yeah, I already invested money in my education. And this yes, I already uh, worked here. And so many people just continue to live the way which doesn't have any fulfillment, any joy. They go to work, just look at the watch when they start and when how... Uh, when they can go home, when the shift finish. So what you would to suggest to, to for these people from your um, experience? So my suggestion simply is to go back to those three basic questions. And that is, if you have that lack of peace, I call it lack of peace. If you don't, if you feel as though 
you're not on the path you're supposed to, or the path that you're going is leading you away from the destination you originally envisioned, then you have to really go back and say, okay, now, why am I here? What is the unique value that I bring to this job? Okay, I'm, I'm 30 years old or 40 years old or whatever. It doesn't matter. And this is what I'm bringing. Well, where else is that value? Not the specific job title, but the, that value. Where else could it be more valuable? Where else could it be more impactful? Not just, I mean, if you're impacting people, if you're making a difference, if people see that, right? Whether you're a business owner or an employee in a large company, you're going to be successful. People, the the your, the attraction is going to be there. The problem is we all, when people are saying, I, I'm trapped, they're dealing with a mindset of scarcity. They're dealing with a mindset of, okay, I can't. Not how can I, but I can't. So you've got to come back to that that basic vision. Okay, what do, what value do I have? You know, why am I here? And really, where do I want to go? And if you see there's a lack of alignment with where you're at, then continuing to do that over and over, as I say, you're, you don't want, if you're not happy with where you're at, you don't want your history to be your destiny. And the only way to do that is to take that, your frontal lobe, that 5% and continual, continually focus it on where you want to go. I mean, it sounds like, you know, you're, if you're somebody, you don't want to go where this job is taking you, then you need to fix that. Again, leaders make a decision very quickly, but sometimes you, you forget and that's what the vision challenge, that's what I, I work on does is, is basically taking that mindset, that alignment and applying it and revisiting that and getting that foundation back to where it needs to be. Yeah, exactly. I recently heard interesting statistic and it says that people have 4,000 weeks if they're lucky to live till 80. <laughs> And it was just what four thousand weeks till eighty. So it is really that life is so short, and people, some people even they think that they have like five hundred years agreement <laughs> to live, right? But if we look at this perception that really life is so short, and we came here with our uniqueness. Yes, you told that nobody is the same, is as it is no snowflake the same. So right. many snowflakes, yeah, and no one is the same. And we are the highest form of creation. So how much God put in us, we were created as his image. So we have all these abilities and power and our high, high uh, faculties such as imagination. And our mind is the laboratory, like a workshop where we can create anything that we wa want. So this is just the matter how people know themselves, how people study themselves and understand why they are where they are now. Mm -hmm. And is it was their decision or maybe it is somebody else who made them think about themselves this way or maybe even choose for them to be doctor or lawyer or any other prestigious jobs, which they don't feel that they really enjoy that. And um, uh, yeah, I, I would say that it is never late. It is never late uh, to find your purpose in life, to find your mission in life and uh, thrive and enjoy and uh, create something new as we all are creators. I totally agree. And I would tell you that that's exactly where everybody needs to be. I tend to like working with though I have five millennial children. So I like working with those that are just getting started to make, allow them to benefit from where I'm going. And then I also like to work with those who have come to the realization you're talking about that as they look, and that was really me when I got to the point of saying it wasn't, I was at the top of my game. 
I was really people people were just blown away when I said I'm retiring because you know big house lots of cars lots of you know all this stuff right and five of my four of my five kids were still in middle school and high school and they said what are you doing but the reality of it is knowing and I like working with people that come to that realization either it's forced on them because they're moved out of the workforce that they were in because of economic changes, but life is a challenge. Your dream doesn't change. Your vision shouldn't change just because the how changes or how you get there. The path gets rocky. You still have to keep moving. The mindset is, okay, I have some different challenges in front of me. I don't have the support that I had. I don't have the job that I had, the country that I had, the finances that I, you know, whatever it might be but I'm still going. I'm still on that journey. Mm. You followed your heart. Yes. And in many, many cases, it is like we have this uh, intuition. Yes. Like mm -hmm. calling. We have the calling and we know exactly what we supposed to do and what we want to do. And then we can get trapped in the logic. Mm -hmm. And when the logic says, no, this is, you don't know how to do this, 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 this. And also many people just get trapped in the logic and this is how they get stuck. Mm -hmm. Because the logic is just two, three percent of our potential and logic is just based on the scores of our previous actions and mm -hmm. everything what we achieved before and it doesn't know the future. And our intuition and our heart is something that knows our future. And when we develop intuition, it is like intuition speaking with us from our, high, our higher self mm -hmm. that already knows where we are meant to be. So what do you think how important is for you when you make decisions, how important is for you to make decisions based on this calling on your heart, on your intuition? So the, the, the key is that, and, and this is back, you know, my, my metaphor of warrior versus zombie. So the zombie mind is basically the one, your subconscious, the things that are, it's there to quote, protect you, keep you basically safe. And so if you don't think, if you're not engaging that 5% of your mind that enables you to tap into the higher purpose, tap into the possibilities then you're going to keep doing that and your destiny will be your history what what you've done because your history you know again we're wired that way for survival to to not get in ourselves in situations that's a good news and a bad news the good the 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 bad news is it keeps you from following that intuition following that vision of what is possible that's why the how is less important than the why that's why knowing why I need to move. What is my unique cause? Why is, why am I here on the planet? What is my, what am I supposed, at the end of the day, what is my legacy? What am I going to do? I looked at it. And even though I was making a million dollars a year and had a great lifestyle, I felt that the, I could see that I was going to end, get to the end of the road with regrets. Mm -hmm that things wouldn't be the way I want. I wouldn't have the impact that I wanted to have. I'd make a lot of money, but I wouldn't have the impact. I wanted to, I want both. I mean, but I want to do the impact first. I, I knew that a lot of people just say, okay, I want to be safe. I want to keep doing 95% of the decisions you made yesterday are going to be the same decisions you make today and the same decisions you make tomorrow. It's only that 5% where your mindset needs to realize, okay, there's more. I can do more. I can have more impact. And the clearer you are on that, the more likely you are to move in that, that moment, in that mindset. But it's hard. It's again, you're, you're work, you're, you're swimming upstream. That's why it's warrior versus zombie. The zombie is always holding you back, whether it's the things in your world or more importantly, the things in your mind that inhibit your ability to keep moving forward. That's why I say warriors always move forward. Yes, amazing, amazing. 
So we spoke about attitude. We spoke about uh, being brave to embrace the new uh, challenges. We also spoke about mindset to uh, see the big picture, make decision fast. And um, also wanted to ask you, what is your definition of success? So my definition of success is fulfilling my life purpose, which is changing the world one dream at a time. So I want to make generational impact, not only for my kids and their kids, but your kids and their kids and beyond. I want to have that kind of impact. You say, how can you change the world? Well, you can change it. Back when I was doing deals, you know, I tried to change a whole company. I said, this is wrong. We're not doing it this way when I was with General Motors and I became changed a mindset. I'm changing the company one deal at a time. It's the same thing. I can make a difference if I can help you understand why you're here, the value you provide and where you're going. And if I can encourage that and then ultimately connect you with people that can help you along the way, because that's why I build networks and community now is because I realized that's, that's my life purpose. That's what success is to me. Being able to live, a, have the impact that I want to have at the end of the day and having a living a version of my ideal day every day, which I do, by the way. It's not Groundhog Day. It's not the same day. But it's I live a version of my ideal day every day. And you're part of that today. So this show is part of that today. I make space to do the things that I really want, support the people that I really want to serve. Yeah, and I really so grateful uh, to have you in this show today and um, you sharing this uh, so important insights. If there would be one message which you would like to share with people who listen to us, what would that be? Well, it would be kind of where we started before we even started the podcast, really, Alina, and that is all things are possible. So when ask yourself if anything were possible and then realize all that's that is possible. And then the second thing is do it now. You said you started. <laughs> don't don't deal in the world of imperatives. Don't focus on, um, you know, what. I wish I could, I want to, All that's language of imperatives. Just do it and do it now, regardless of how old, how young, how much you know about how to do it. Just know that if that's in your heart, if that's in your mind, it's possible and you can do it. Yeah, follow your heart, decide what you really want and go big and do it now. I love yeah. that. Go big or go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So it was so, such a great conversation. And I appreciate you for sharing this message with the world. And I wish you all the best. And uh, looking forward to see you again in our future episodes. You betcha. All right, Elena. Good job. Thank you, everybody. Bye for now.